Welcome to the Finding Sessions podcast, where I believe that having an open mind and a willingness to be honest with ourselves can open new doors of possibility. Please join me as I share my thoughts with you. Do you ever have feelings of self-doubt, maybe overthinking things, or sometimes finding it hard to make decisions? Or maybe that feeling that you're not quite good enough at certain things. Or maybe in social settings, you never feel quite interesting enough, smart enough, or successful enough. Or maybe you feel like you're on the constant path of self-improvement. And as soon as you believe you've achieved your goals, you're looking for something else to improve. Or maybe you have fears of trying something new because you don't want to fail, even if other people around you are willing to dive in, laugh at themselves, make mistakes. Sometimes we can be living in a world where outwardly all appears to be well, without even realizing that we hold some insecurity that's driving our behavior, our reactions to others, even our relationships. And maybe sometimes our anxieties that come from our inner criticism can hold us back from enjoying all those wonderful things in life that we could experience if we didn't have a fear of failure or of being judged. Insecurities. We all have them. That's what this episode is about. Although it's a pretty broad topic, I'll share some thoughts on certain insecurities and how they may play a role in our thoughts, behaviors, and relationships. I can assure you this topic won't cover everything. This is just a start. So please join me. Insecurities are usually something personal to us, about something that makes us feel inadequate or less than something we feel we must make up for, that maybe holds us back from doing certain things, or that forces us into some constant pursuit of correction or perfection. They may develop after a traumatic situation or maybe a relationship event. For instance, some people will deal with feelings of abandonment or fear of being unloved. And some of those initial insecurities we learn are planted during our childhoods by something someone might have said to us. Sometimes it's born out of something that we would never have imagined to be an issue had someone not put that thought in our head. But it's only after someone tells you about it that you discover you have this perceived flaw. Whether you were told something about your appearance or that you had a goofy laugh or a clumsy style of movement or whether it had to do with the funny way you spoke or your lack of knowledge about certain things or even your socioeconomic status, it could come from anything. And of course you don't have a flaw. We are all perfectly imperfect here on this earth as we are meant to be. And it's in those differences that each of us has that makes us uniquely beautiful. As children, we begin our lives with a blank canvas, ready to learn and experience through mimicking those we love, those around us. It's another form of learning. And it's this outside world that teaches us how to think how to behave. We don't know if there's anything wrong with us until someone does or says something to make us believe there is. When a little child experiences that first moment where they begin to realize maybe there's something different about them, that can shift their perspective about themselves, maybe seeing themselves differently for the first time in comparison to others. And those seeds of insecurity are planted. I'm sure if you reflect back, you may even think of a time or two, maybe when a loving, well-meaning parent or someone else in your life said something 
but you carried an insecurity about that very thing ever since. Even if you know from a logical perspective that the little flaws you believe you have aren't that important or significant in the scheme of life, this doesn't change the fact that they can impact not only how you feel about yourself, but also how you feel about others around you, and they can impact your relationships. Insecurities derived from these places of comparison come from the false belief that differences aren't good. They're created by other people or through our own comparisons to the external world based on a conditioning that tells us being unique or different is sometimes not good. And instead, we seek that uniformity, that sameness with others, so we don't stand out. You may be aware of some of your own insecurities, but maybe you've never thought about where they came from. And it's possible that if you do think about where they come from, it can help you even see them differently and maybe help you understand how you came to believe this about yourself. This may also help you discover that it came from someone else's insecurities or fears that were somehow projected on you. Maybe even from a parent who doesn't want their child to experience the hurt or pain that maybe they experienced. They may say something or do something that gives their child the impression that something they see in them isn't good enough, even if that was not intended. When you begin to discover that these beliefs you have about yourself are not from a place of truth, perhaps you may even be able to find a way to appreciate or even embrace those special and beautiful aspects of who you are that make you uniquely you. Insecurities can sometimes be so subtle that you may not even know you have any until you begin to understand your behavior a little more. And then you think about where these behaviors or thoughts come from. Sometimes it's difficult to identify behaviors that are coming from a place of insecurity. Behaviors such as maybe people-pleasing, over-accommodating, maybe having difficulties with boundaries and saying no, or seeking constant approval or validation, or maybe even over-explaining or justifying yourself excessively. These can all be indicators of potential areas of insecurity. Sometimes these behaviors can seem to be a positive trait or characteristic, and so they may not seem out of the norm. That makes it difficult to identify if there's any issue with them at all. And if your behaviors are driven by desires for success, perfection, making sure you're at the top of your game, our world, the outside world by which we compare ourselves, tells us that these are all positive things. It tells us that we're successful. And sometimes, Behaviors that we perceive to be the opposite, perhaps not being driven, not concerned about achievements or success, being comfortable without the need to excel, is sometimes described as lazy, mediocre. And I guess extreme behavior on either end is probably not healthy. I've always believed that if you really want to do something, then you should give it your best shot. But the real question is, what are you choosing to do and why? In my case, although there were many things in my life I wanted to do, I think there were a few times I did something only to either prove something to myself or because someone else wanted me to do it and I couldn't say no. Usually the telltale sign I didn't want to do something was that I was debating it over and over, and then I would succumb. But one time during one of these debates, someone asked me, what are you trying to prove in doing this? Why are you doing it? And it was only when I took that pause and thought about it that I realized 
it wasn't something I really wanted to do. It's incredibly liberating when you begin to realize that some of the things you chose to do didn't come from within, but from some belief that you somehow had to meet a perceived external expectation placed on you. And once you realize this, and you become aware of what really matters to you, you begin to make decisions that are more in line with your true self. This was actually quite an epiphany for me, because it signaled the moment that I began to realize some of my choices weren't coming from within. So on deeper inner reflection, you may discover that even some of your positive behaviors may be coming from a place of insecurity. Since insecurities are usually about something we don't like about ourselves, the steps you may take to improve on them are sometimes seen as a positive thing to yourself and others. And in response, you receive positive validation. But for someone with insecurities, positive validation can be a trap because it can keep holding you into this pattern, making it very difficult to actually know what makes you happy. And outward success doesn't guarantee inner fulfillment if your underlying insecurities are not resolved. It's easy to find yourself caught in the entrapments of the outside world in terms of the societal pressures and norms associated with body image, success, education, And when you become caught up in these entrapments, sometimes you can lose sight of what you really need, what really matters to you. You can get so caught up in it that sometimes what you think is important really isn't. And your constant pursuit continues. And you just keep feeding that drive to change, perhaps without finding that happiness you're looking for. These same behaviors could apply to any kind of insecurity. Many of the insecurities people have can be masked by the success of the drive that feeds them. For some people, their insecurities may prevent them from participating in life or from trying something new and missing out on opportunities and experiences. They can also affect your relationships impacting how you behave with those closest to you, or even how you judge others. Some say that when you judge someone else, it can sometimes be a reflection of how you feel about yourself. Maybe the very thing you don't like in yourself, you see in someone else. Or perhaps you judge those who have the qualities that you feel you're missing. Once you recognize that you're still carrying this insecurity, if you can reflect inward and come to a place where you realize that what you thought were your flaws or imperfections were created in your mind by the outside world, maybe what people told you, you may discover that they aren't really flaws or imperfections at all. Consider this. Imagine going back to your childhood or that time that you discovered you had a flaw. And instead, imagine you were told something else, a completely different message, maybe even about a completely different flaw. Is it possible you may be sitting here now with a different set of insecurities? When you begin to have clarity that these thoughts and ideas that you have about yourself come from the outside world, from others who are equally misled and who carry their own insecurities, you may be able to discover the absurdity in all of it. And you may begin to accept the beautiful, unique elements of what makes you, you. And when you do that, the insecurities dissolve. By giving yourself the compassion and the grace to be who you really are, without fear of comparison or judgment, you may even begin to discover that you no longer want to be like everyone else. 
In fact, you might even embrace some of these beautiful aspects about yourself. When you begin to have compassion for yourself, you may also find this compassion extends to others, even for people that you struggled to appreciate in the past, because you'll understand where they come from as well. And in doing so, you can embrace others with an open mind, an open heart, and warmth that brings us all closer together. Thank you. My wish for you is to live in positivity, health, and harmony. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked this episode, please feel free to follow the show, share the episode, or give me a review. You can also check me out on my Instagram at The Finding Sessions.